Hi guys, I'm Sam from the Unity of Life and welcome back to my channel, which I hope you have subscribed if you've liked my content so far. So in the past videos we've been looking at animals and what they do for us humans and what we unfortunately do to them in return. So, because we did train it in the last video, specifically about a dog, I thought today in this video we could look at the evolution of a dog, just in case you're not aware of this or you want to try and educate your kids and you don't know how. Okay, so let's get started. So Charles Darwin once proposed that the evolution happened through natural selection. Okay, so natural selection is things that have been purposely um, bred into animals naturally, not by us, um, over a period of time that have helped the animal to survive. Okay, so he stated that living things have evolved from one organism. Basically, things that live, um, different species, they share an ancestor. Like, me and you, we share an ancestor with a chimp and most great apes. A dog shares an ancestor, common ancestor with, um, with foxes and wolves. Okay, there's a huge tree. Um, and there's these different branches that come off of this family tree. So he believed that a species it changes over time and he was able to prove this theory I may hand. Uh, and those changes in the DNA were called mutations, okay? So he didn't know anything about DNA, he was a Victorian. Nobody knew anything about DNA until I believe it was like 1980s. Um, so we have these mutations and this is what causes evolution, for example, loads of rabbits, once upon a time they could have had tiny little lions and they were getting eaten because they couldn't hear thing, uh, predators from far away. However, one day, because of this mutation in the genes and the genetics, this one rabbit was born with these really big floppy ears and he could hear more, or she, and they survived longer. And so they mated and they passed on their gene near to their offspring and their offspring were all born with big floppy ears. And then eventually as we get further onto the species, all rabbits had big floppy ears because it was a survival. It was going to help their survival. So, th so it, it, it basically is like a trade-off. It's like one male and a female, you've got the best traits to survive, I've got the best traits to survive and they have their children with that have the best genes from both parents possible to survive okay so natural selection is linked to mutations for example if the dog is born with point here was... okay we, we just had an example with the with the rabbits so just keep in mind um with the rabbits and their ears okay oh right okay i could, might not be pronouncing this word properly um but i'll give it a go if you watch this channel you know i butcher words a lot so i apologize so the malix or melis not sure uh is known as one of the first ancestors of the coyote in all carnivores including hyenas uh any canines felines bears and raccoons so canines are dogs felines are cats hyenas aren't really we were, uh, they're not dogs or anything like that. Uh, bears and raccoons are obviously, you know what a bear and raccoon looks like. Okay, so it's believed that they first appeared around 60 to 55 million years ago. A long, long time before any of us was born. So this Malice or Malice, this common ancestor, it live in North America and the Europe continents, just like coyotes today. So better known as the bear dog, they've been given rise to two branches on this family tree that I've already mentioned. So that we have one in Eurasia and they have one in Africa. So the Eurasian branch is called, again, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this properly, but the Tomatrus. That doesn't sound right, but anyway. Um, and that's where your, the wolves, your dogs and your foxes originated from. If you already spoke a little bit about foxes. <laughs> So many big words that I just can't pronounce. Here's another one. Defafrus. Not sure. That's uh, again, doesn't sound right. Um, they were the same size as coyotes and they shared important similarities with today's dogs and bears. The legs were so short that they would ambush their pre pre uh, preys and they would scavenge because they didn't have long enough to chase after them. So one of the dog's ancestors that we still have today is the lichen. 
unfortunately they are an endangered species and they are absolutely pretty and if you don't quite know what a lichen is um i can put a picture down below so you, you can see them oh another big word so the tomatoes looked a lot like german shepherd bear dogs um and they sort of started to disappear and like their ancestors the ancestors before them they were scavengers Okay, the diet was made up of mostly dead animals and bones. Um, and I'll see if I can find some pictures of these weird and wonderful ancestors and I will put them in this video. Oh god, right, another word I can't pronounce. Right, the biohabogris. Yeah, I hope you said oh, I'm having a good laugh. Oh, um, that doesn't sound right. But about 80 centimetres long and the smallest of the bone crushing ancestors, but their jaws were more developed because their diet consisted mainly of bones. Ooh. The world began to change after the ice age. So the sea levels, they began to rise and forests began to disappear. This led to wolves having to scavenge for their food and resources were limited. Wolves are strict carnivores, uh, with many animals going extinct after the ice age because of the loss of habitat, there was less food for these wolves to hunt. So wolves live in packs, in case you didn't know, and in their packs they have a social order. So you've got mum and dad, they're dominant, and then the rest of the subordinates up until them. Omega. It's pretty much the rand is all their offspring. So wolves are known for their blood curdling howl, which I think absolutely sounds beautiful. And they do this to communicate with their pack and to send a warning to other rival packs. So almost to our domestic dogs when they bark to communicate with each other or tell somebody to get off their garden. And or not to walk past their house if you don't have a garden. So wolves generally is believed that they do mate for life and a lone wolf isn't quite a happy wolf so wolves can start a new pack but this can be dangerous as sometimes they try to draw the opposite sex from a rival pack you know, you're gonna have like 20 wolves against one oh, that ain't fun you want to hijack it out there it's just not worth it or they're going to try and um join that pack as it is which is a bit more trickier another way in which they can become part of a pack is the male Alpha has died and the female Alpha won't be far behind, unfortunately, and we say that it's the daughter who's quite dominant and she's going to take over and the lone wolf can join us, my, uh, can wiggle his way into the pack that way. Um, so the feed of the young just a bit like birds by regurgitating the food just eating for the bubs, and it's not just mum and dad, it's also the siblings as well, um, but I have presentation and well a video we're gonna do a video on wolves um in general anyway a little date so wolves are very curious animals like we are and the less the less aggressive wolves and the more curious the wolves were they they ones who came closer to human camps um and they could learn they could eat out scraps it's meant less work for them because they didn't have to hunt it was believed that wolves had adopted us by following us around when we then started to interact with the wolves the wolves warned us about dangerous animals um this is when we were like cave people and we were living out in the open um and one thing is that we took in the orphans whose mothers were killed to protect them um all you know, the little puppies wolf cubs another suggestion is that we might have killed the parents and kept the puppies which is horrible um, and when the puppies matured we then bred them because they'll be used to humans so and the like i said the tame puppies they were kept and unfortunately the puppy was very aggressive but this is a very early human times they didn't know any better there was no none of this animal welfare or animal rights at this point in time um what we're talking about here and so we started to use bulls for hunting because they are brilliant hunters um and then we started to selective breeding and this selective breeding has given us our different breeds of dogs mainly in the victorian era that that happened so artificial official selection is where we have picked which dogs to breed from either for what they look like or their abilities to hunt or guard us or even personality traits so i'm going to explain go into a little bit of detail about papillonians and the things that i found in them um well, actually, I won't go into that because I'm going to go on to another um, 
I'm going to do another video about um, the problems that you find in dogs later on um, in certain breeds. Um, so we'll look at these populations and we'll look at uh, Brassicophallic dogs as well. So these are dogs that haven't got a nose. They look like they've walked into a rant with a last door and kept them running. Um, these are like your pogs, your French bulldogs, your bulldogs, your boxers, um, and even your little King Charles Spaniels. Okay. So we'll talk, talk about all that in a different one. Uh, basically, what you need to know for this is that the Kennel Club um, they breed for a pretty looking dog and nothing more. You should buy a lot of German Slopped Shepherds these days. They have um, a slope back and they can't walk rather than their back being straight. It's ridiculous. So I'm going. I'm so that the, the, so basically pedigree dogs. They have more problems than dogs that are mutts and aren't pedigrees and are crossbreeds. So if you look at the screen, you will see um, this black whippet looking dog. Um, this is Rosie. Rosie uh, is no longer with us. She had lung cancer at 10 years old back in 2015 and had to put down. However, up until that point, she was a really healthy dog. Um, yeah, she had a few problems with crystals in her bladder, but she had far less health problems than say what a pedigree might have. Um, they may have back problems. They may have like liver shunts, birth defects, all the jazz that we're going to get into. Um, in other videos so we thought she was allergic across by a whippet which she might not have been because she was a rescue puppy we didn't know mum and dad um because mum was actually killed and she was actually hand-made you will be introduced into rose's sto story into a later video so let's have a look at saint john water dogs heard of them no do you know why you've not heard of them because his breed of dog has gone extinct and I will put a picture right here of what that dog looks like. Okay. So the live so the dogs that I'm gonna be pictured down here, they're 13 and 15 years old. That's the age they live to. Anyway. Um and one of them was called Lassie. Uh, and they were both females, so that's why the the breed died out because there was no males. So these dogs were used for fishing in Newfoundlands and were held lies and retrieved um, things like seals. And then the government put high tax on working dogs and they were not used. And then they were used for sheep, not used for sheep, sorry. So then dogs, water dogs were then important to put on to people who wanted to improve their retrieval lines. Um, and unfortunately, these dogs were bred out to um, distinction, uh, extinction in the mid 1970s. Um, but we have golden retrievers that have come from that breed. So, just a finishing thought. Um, I don't know if anybody's read the book or seen the TV series that the is based on the book called Zoo by James Pattinson. So this is about animals and they've basically had enough of humans. They've had this mutated gene and they basically there's a whole apocalypse and humans are being murdered um, by these animals with this mutated gene. Um, it, it, it's quite threatening basically so th they try to take control and they try to wipe out the human race the animals with the mutant training that's why they're killing the humans they've had enough get rid of the problem and for thousands of uh years we've trespassed in a world that isn't ours right because animals were actually here first before we came along before um our common ancestors came down from the trees and started walking up right and talking like losing um you may have heard of um and there's now there, there once were one million people throughout the whole world and now we uh and we lived in fear of animals and now they live in fear of us or the ones that are most animals live in fear of us in the deal live with us um, because some people are cruel and if we're not careful then we may breed dogs into extinction and that all the history will repeat itself and all these animals that we have we're going to be wiped out and they're going to go extinct so i'm going to try and keep, <laughs> to keep this video short because i know the previous ones have been quite long so click on my face down here to subscribe next video check it out 
playlist down here for the rest of the, for the videos in this sequence. Check them out, the previous videos for this. Um, you don't have to watch them before you watch this. And I will see you next time in the next video. But do not forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. It's all in our on our channel. All the information for that I can also put it in the description. And I'll see you next time. Bye.